So I came to Union in 1994 um, to do my doctoral program. And it was at the time a joint degree with Teachers College is uh, in religion and education. I've always wanted to be uh, a Union student and I've looked to this, this place as a place of justice, exciting new theology, and the, way, the ways in which we could really live out and embody what we believed uh, and in our, in our faith, in our faith and given our faith and in our faith. So I graduated in 1999 and I embarked on what I would now call, not what people call now, an alt-ac career, which is alternate academic career. Each of the positions that I took on, I felt like it was another move towards um, an integration of myself and integration of my gifts and uh, furthering of my vocation. So I went first from the doctoral program to uh, Dean of Students uh, position. And while I was Dean of Students, I was also being, I was also director of recruitment. So I was doing that work together, both, both, both positions. And then I've done that for a while. And then um, an offer was there to join the development, the development team the development office and that's something I've not done before but again I felt like there was something drawing me to that work that I thought that my skills and my gifts and my desires and my vocation was somehow being lived out in that role. So I moved into that um, office and then it was moved up to the Vice President for Institutional Advancement and from that position um, after some years um, I moved to now this current position in field education. And again, I saw this role as a yet another stage of uh, maturing of my vocation and where all, I brought all my gifts and skills and my desires and uh, my calling to this work. Yeah, it's true to say that each of the role, in each of these roles, I was the first Asian American woman, Asian American queer woman to be in these roles. And um, you know, as that brought its own challenges. I had to sort of chart my own path and learn um, from, learn by doing. I had mentors, but not someone who could really help me in the, in, within my identities. So like, if I look at my identity, multiple identities that come together, um, Asian American, woman, queer, and I have all these other identities, like I'm a multiple belonger, in grounded in Presbyterian tradition. Also, I'm a mother and a grandmother, a uh, partner, and all, if we, you could you know, add on lots of these ideas, but if I was to focus on the three, Asian American, woman, and queer, the women piece and the queer piece, I felt like I had found a home here at Union. They were welcoming. I found a support network. I found my colleagues. I found a home here. But the Asian American piece has always been a struggle. And you know, this is a sort of a microcosm of a larger society. And there is a lot of um, misunderstanding or lack of understanding of what AAPI is or means uh, as, a, as, as a group of people, because partly it's, it's a political terminology that kind of groups everyone together. But, but in fact, it's a huge continent with countries, nation states that have its own unique history. And I think perhaps um, important, and it's more important, but importantly, it's unique to its relationship to the US. So how we show up, how we, when we show up here, how we get here, what we're doing here, all of our tied to our historical histories that I, I feel like the mainstream Americans just don't know. And so they resort to stereotypes. And I found that to be a real challenge here, especially when the race conversation tends to be framed around black-white paradigm. And I struggle to you know, muscle my way in to say, you know, my experience also counts and my experience is valid. And uh, I want to share, um, you know, part of how I experience the place. But uh, that's not always afforded to me. So what I would say if um, a younger Asian American woman, queer, and etc., etc., other identities person 
uh, what would I say to them if they came to me and said, how do I get all my, my, all my identities accepted? I will say, um, you can't, and it's, there's no place that will have all that, all those identities equally accepted. And I think that is a reality and we live with that. I would say, um, seek your people. Who are your people? And who can, who, where, where can you go to rejuvenate, to be accepted? Where can you go to refresh when you can't have that peace um, accepted? For me, it's been my over 30 years connection to Pan Autumn, which is Pacific Asian, North American Asian Women in Theology Ministry. It's a very long title. And they are my sisters, they're my people. They, I, you know, when I started there, there were no uh, Asian American women in theological education teaching, administering, or anything. But now, uh, I look back and a lot of our, my sisters, our panel of sisters, are in leadership positions in theological education. So I would say, look for your people, find where you find, uh, seek those places that give you nurture and that give you um, strength and sustenance because it's, it's a long distance run. Secondly, um, just continue to speak and speak out and trust that at, at some time it, it will be heard. Um, and also, I think, amplify uh, when I find people whose voices are still also not heard. How do I use my role to amplify those voices? How do I listen more carefully? How do I listen to those uh, invisible spaces? How do I breathe or uh, um, shine light into and breathe life into um, and, and provide space for people to speak those into, uh, into speech? And finally, I would just say, um, trust yourself. And I mean, I think that is like, trust and care for yourself because again, this is a long, long time, long term uh, struggle and it's a marathon. And if we don't care for oneself and trust oneself, we're not gonna get through it.